Okay, welcome back to the disassembly of the Monroe Model K calculator. Um, I have moved the camera down a bit so that we can see more from the side. Um, I've also put this little um, black background over there to uh, hide some of the clutter. So hopefully you'll be able to see things maybe a little better. I hope. Um, so before, um, I took off the clapper mechanism for the bell. Ding, bell. Um, in order to get at this lever right over here so that I can remove it from here. Now this lever is held on to this other lever with um, basically a retaining clip. So if I can remove that retaining clip, I can take this lever off of this other lever and then lift off this entire axle. Um, I'm going to take this bell off first um, just to clear it out of the way um, and then I can put it in bag four along with the clapper. So I'll just remove the bell. So here's the screw. And what is it? It's a 640 screw. That is 0.244. So that will go. bag, as will the bell, which just comes off. Of that, bell. Okay. Now the bell is off, we can sort of see things a little better here. Okay, here's a, a lever. Here's the bell um, on-off lever. So, okay, so this lever here, um, what we need to do is take off this uh, retaining clip. Now, this isn't like a modern like C-clip or E-clip. It's uh, just a piece of wire. So it's probably a piece of spring wire. So I can probably pry it off and that's where uh, these two tools come in. So we have the dental pick and the one millimeter um, screwdriver. So what I'm going to attempt to do is find the break in the wire and then try to open up the wire. Okay, so there's the break, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the screwdriver into the brake and try to pry that apart. That's not working very well. And sometimes it just takes a little while to remove it. So maybe I can push on it from one side and maybe um, pry it with the screwdriver from the other side. No. Okay. This is this is one of those kind of frustrating moments. where you have to try not to do a lot of damage. Am I in? No. Okay, let's try. Well, 
This is in pretty tightly. Um, hmm. Let's see what else I can do with it. So if I can get, there we go. All right, so it was just really a question of getting that break in the wire to open up a little bit so that I can now sort of open it up a little more. Just open the wire up. And now, let's see if I can sort of lever the thing open. So I've got the pick on one side and the flat of the screw driver on the other side. And I just sort of try to lever the opening, which isn't working very well, but it will soon. 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 Well, this is proving to be a bit of a pain. So I can still lever this open. Hmm. I think my hand was in the way for most of that, which is kind of a pain. Sorry, but uh, I'll see if I can do this from the other side. This must make for incredibly boring video, but I think I've almost got it. Yeah, now it's open. Okay, so now what I can do is just use the pick and just pull at it very carefully so that it doesn't jump away. Is my hand in the way? Not really. Okay, there we go. Ooh, and there was a washer that came off as well. So, there we go. The, uh, the clip. Okay. I'm going to start another bag for this thing. So we're on bag five now. Bag five, seven, seven, three, three, nine. Okay, so a uh, clip and a washer. Now with washers, Again, I don't know how many washers I'm going to pull off this thing, so I'm going to measure the washer in its thickness. So it is 0 0.034 inches thick, and its outer diameter, which is 0.315, and its inner diameter, which is 0.153. And just for completeness, I'll take the retaining wire clip and measure its wire diameter, which is 0 0.037. Okay. So um, what I might do is uh, replace that with a modern C-clip. Um, not quite, um, not quite, um, it's a little bit anachronistic, but uh, I think that, I don't know, 
I, I think it's a better thing to do. Okay, so now this lever could come off. I can just bend it and it removes. All right. And now it's off and now I should be able to pry this axle off. So I need to find a good pry point so that I don't damage anything. Let's see, can I? Well, hmm. If I can lift this, no. Can I pry? Let's see. How about this way, this way? How about this way? No. This way. Ah, how about this way? There we go. It just lifts out. All right, so let's have a look at what we've got. So it's loose now, but there are these kind of clip sort of things here, and there's another one on this other side. So there's this clip here. Um, and that just holds this in place. Um, I should just be able to pull it out. So here's one side. Now the other side doesn't seem to want to come out really well. And I'm wondering why that is. Is it attached to something? It doesn't look like it. I may just need to pry it out slightly more. What's it catching on? Nothing that I can see. Okay, so this, this part is loose, and I'm just going to lever this out. There we go. That's all that was happening. All right. So there we go. It just levers out, and then you just pull it free of the clips, and there it is. The Leibniz wheels. So spring loaded for each one and it kind of looks like each wheel is made up of several plates which is kind of interesting. Uh, the one that I took apart actually has fingers that reach out this way. Um, so there's a short finger here, a longer finger here, a longer one over here. Um, I guess that's this is another way of putting one of these together. So the Leibniz wheel the Leibniz axle. So this is an assembly. I'm going to set it aside. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what's left. So I removed that so that I could remove this top um, assembly, which is basically two axles. There's this. These are called the intermediate gears because they basically uh, transform motion from the Leibniz wheels to the carriage gears, so intermediate gears. Um, and then there is this part, which is just an axle that holds on to um, a bunch of levers. One of the levers is this clicky thing, and there's one for each wheel. This is actually the lever that indicates a carry to the next um, digit. So what happens is the carriage wheel spins and then when it goes from 9 to 0 or from 0 to 9 um, there's a little tab that pushes this lever down. And on the other side of the lever if we look at the, uh, the carry thing, this thing right over here, um, it spins around like this and if I click one of these levers, you can see that there's a thing on the opposite side that pushes out. And as 
the carry turns, it actually pushes one of these um, spring-loaded, they call them dogs, I don't know why. It actually pushes that, which will turn the next wheel. And I don't know if you can actually see that turning, but the next wheel turns. And then as it continues to turn, there's a tab which resets the lever. And that's the carry mechanism, which is pretty clever. All right, so, um, so the thing is that I was going to take this out. So, um, and the reason that I couldn't take it out is that I could get to every screw except for this except for this screw right in here because this roller is in the way. So I need to remove that somehow. And my thinking was this roller is connected to this entire assembly right over here. So if I can just remove this entire assembly, I can, um, well, not remove it, but if I can loosen this, I can tilt this backwards like this so that I can get at the screw. Um, the, there is a spring holding that, which apparently I just loosened, so that's all right. Um, and now I just need to undo this, um, this screw, which I uh, previously undid. Um, there is a nut on the other side, so let me remove the nut first. So there's the nut. And then I can remove the screw. Now again, whenever you're removing a screw with lots of parts on it, you need to be able to put it back together again in the right order. So um, let us note that there's the screw and then there's this uh, clip which held on to the Leibniz axle. And then there's this other lever with the spring on it. And then there's the frame and then there's the nut. So there's the screw, there's the clip, and there's the uh, axle. Okay, and as you can see, I can now move the roller backwards so that I can reach the screw. Now, if that's the way they actually put it together, I'm not sure. Um, but it sure looks like it because I can't take this out. So obviously, they could have done it like that. So let's measure this screw. So this screw is a number 836. It's got this huge shoulder on it. Um, the total length of the screw, it's actually got multiple shoulders is 1.226 and to the first shoulder is 0.464 to the second shoulder is 1.117 so anyway just some numbers so that I can differentiate this screw from all the others so I'm going to take the clip um, put it in I'm going to take the nut put it in um, the spring seems pretty steady, so now what I'm going to do is unscrew all of these screws, starting with the most difficult one, the one that I was having difficulty with. So let's rotate this. Um, now it's, it is unfortunately hard to see um, this screw. Actually, levering it this way doesn't help. It's lifting it and levering it that way that actually helps. So again, if I didn't have such a fat screwdriver, I could get in here more easily, but there it goes. I'm not really convinced that this angle was the best angle for the camera. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Yeah. 
So we're removing this screw right here. screw come out there we go it's as good as anything so there's the screw um, it is a number 836 And its length is point three three two. So now, now I'm going to remove the other screw on the half bushing. This two is a number 836. And it's 0.315. Okay. Now the question is, can I remove, yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the entire assembly. Um, so, this is how it went into the machine. And you can see that you can tilt this and remove the piece. So that's how it goes back together. You simply put it in like that in the slot. Okay. And the orientation is like this. Um, there is a screw head over here, but as before, I'm just going to leave this as a single assembly. Eventually, we're going to want to replace this part because this is the broken, broken off thing. So, um, so it looks like I probably could unscrew this and remove the lever and at least model this part and then make something up. Maybe you know, um, use this other part, pull a Jurassic Park and uh, get a new part from Shapeways. So I'm going to put this all in bag five. Okay, there it is. And now I am going to uh, remove the next set of screws. Six point three three four, and the screw that comes after it eight thirty six. Five. Okay, now if I take this half bushing off, um, perhaps you can see here that there is a spring that runs the entire length up to here. And this spring holds these sort of um, I'm not sure what you would call them. They're not washers. They're kind of sort of bearing surfaces. But anyway, they form a detente mechanism. Um, so the gear turns and snaps into its place. 
me move the uh, carry mechanism a little bit. So the gear moves and snaps into place on all of these. Except for these last two. Um, so that's the purpose of that long uh, spring. So uh, obviously when putting it together they probably hooked the spring onto something and then ran, it, ran the wire through and then pulled it all back. So that's what we're going to have to do eventually. But, oops, yeah. So obviously the spring just sort of bounced back and we have uh, this little piece that holds the spring. So that goes in bag five. Um, these little detentes now can come off. So they look kind of like little pulleys. So let's call them pulleys. So they go in bag five. So I can pull them out now. can try to pull them out. Okay, there goes another one. And let's see. Okay, this one seems to be, um, yeah, I can remove that one. Okay, so the spring is now, um, it looks almost um, fully in its uh, compressed state. Um, it's holding on to the other pulleys, so we'll just leave it like that, and we can take them off later. Uh, okay, so now these, this, the sides uh, of the axles here are loose, so now I can just go on to the other side, where we have one, two, three screws to remove. So let's do that. I'll start with the bottom one, which has a, a spring on it and also this roller, this other roller mechanism thing. Um, so I could, I could also remove this. Um, why not? So it's got, again, just like the other side, it's basically a lever with a spring, so I can just remove the spring. Okay. Um, there's a screw here, and behind it is this clip, which I think is the opposite order as the other one, where it was the screw head first, then the clip, then the lever, then the frame, and, and so on. So. Let's go ahead and remove this. And there is a nut on the other side as well, so I think I'll probably have to hold on to it with my pliers, and I will have to somehow unscrew this. Yeah, this is getting a little difficult. Um, let's see, what can I do? Oh, well, I can probably just loosen the nut on the other side, yeah. That'll work. And now, this should be easy and require a lot less force to turn. the nut now. Loosening, loosening, almost there. There we go. Okay, there is the nut. I'll set it aside for now, and I will, um, hmm, is this, is this screwed in the frame? I don't think so. No, I can just push it out. 
There we go. Okay, there is the screw. It is a number 836 from top to bottom. It's 0.744 uh, to the shoulder. It's 0.469. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw its nut back on. I don't know, just so that they can pair up. Um, and now I can also remove the clip. Clip comes off. Now I'm going to take this clip. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to compare it with the other clip because it's a similar looking part, but I took it off of the right side. So this is the right side and this is the left side. And yes, indeed, they're identical. So I don't have to worry about mixing them up. If I did, I would put it in a separate bag. Okay, so now, um, now that this uh, entire lever assembly thing is loose, I can go back here and unscrew, uh, unscrew this side. Now there's still, there's still a, a spring over here. So I'm, um, it's, it's looped into a hole here and it's also looped into, well, it's behind the gear. Ah, there we go. So I just turned it and it's also looped into the uh, hole over here. So you can see it over there. And this is clearly a cam. So the question is, do I remove the spring from here or do I remove it from here? Um, I think that what I'm gonna do is remove it from here. So I'm gonna to have to take my long nose pliers and rotate the hook until it comes out, just like that. And now this is off. There we go. So when I put it back down, I, I sort of have to be careful not to damage this um, over here. So it might actually be a good idea to remove it altogether. Um, so I'm wondering if I should remove this part. Yeah, because what might happen is I might damage it and bend it, and that's no good. So let's remove that screw. Looks like it's a big enough screw that I can use my very large. Huh. Okay, I can't actually use my large screwdriver because its bit is too thick. So I'm going to look in my other set of bits and see. This seems like it would fit bit. This bit fits. Oh, and you know what? Actually, if I look over here, it actually looks like there's a nut. Oh yeah, let me open. Let me lift this up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like there's actually a nut here, which is, whoops, sorry, a nut here, which is holding this screw in. So maybe if I use a set of pliers and I Unscrew this. There we go. See, that's easier. So there's this kind of long nut over here. Then I can simply remove this. And there's nothing else there, no washers or anything. Okay, so it's just about time to uh, wrap up. So I have just enough time to measure the screw, which is, what is it? Mm, it's actually a number 1032, that's unusual. And let's take a look at the structure here. So we have a bushing, a lever, and a washer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this all as one assembly and I'm going to put the nut back on. Okay, that way all the parts are together and I'm going to stick it in bag five. Okay. So now I can 
drop the machine back down, and oh, great, there's yet another part that I have to worry about. Um, so, well, I can do that next time. So, until then, till next time, I'm Rob. See you.